now that we are comfortable with how can we use the analysis file, the analysis editor to perform computations, let us go a step further. As network designers, we are interested in simulations which are giving us meaningful insight. For that, we are going to take various computation examples in this particular module. We are going to look at the first and foremost example of the bitrate, the throughput, the total number of bytes which are received by a certain network, the bytes which are received by the hosts, not the servers, and the average of the peak latency. First, the bitrate. Let's assume a scenario in which there are several source modules, either simple or compound, in the network which generate CBR, constant bitrate traffic. CBR is characterized by the fact that either the packet size remains the same or if the packet arrival is varied, then the packet size may also vary such that over a long period, the overall traffic arrival rate remains constant. The CBR traffic is well known to be identified by the packet length and the duration which is the send interval. Both of these parameters are actually scalars which are stored by every module as a scalar file. Now if you are interested in determining the bitrate, what we do is we go to the analysis editor, we add a compute scalar node which will be useful for us because we are going to extract the bitrate as the node would have a value and a name. The value is the packet length which is given in bytes. It is translated in bits by multiplying it by 8 and dividing it by the duration or the sending interval. And we give it a name bitrate. When we do that, we are actually getting the packet length and the interval. We are processing them together and we are extracting the bitrate. This bitrate can be stored as a scalar quantity within the same scalar file or to another simple text file or a comma separated value file. Take another example of throughput. Here, let's assume that there are various destination modules also known as the sync modules, which record the received bytes and they measure the number of received bytes using the count. The simulation duration is actually single, which is there is a single duration scalar for the top level network module. What we are interested in is we want to measure the overall throughput that each sync module gets. We actually need to refer to the duration because duration will tell us in how much time, how much data was received. But since this duration scalar is at the network level, we need to provide a fully qualified name for it. How are we going to do that? We are going to do that using the code snippet that you see at the bottom. That is, if we assign a name throughput to it, the value is going to be the received byte count converted into bits since we multiply it with 8 and we divide it with not duration but network dot duration. Network dot duration means this is a fully qualified name for the scalar value duration. As another example, if we want to determine the total received bytes, all we have to do is call the sum function. This sum function is going to be applied on the received byte count. And since we are interested in 
the network level the total bytes which are received at and in a certain network we are going to store it at the module network now we can also extract the bytes which have been received by either all the hosts not the servers or some of the hosts within a network what we can do is we can qualify the scalar name using any pattern here we see that in the value on the bottom here in this snippet we see that we are calling the sum function but we are wild carding it with any host given by star star and the star star subsequently shows that it is actually all the bytes which have been received by all the hosts and we save it in the network as another example if you are interested in measuring the average of the peak delays that the transmissions on a certain network experience in an end to end manner we need to call two functions we need to call the max function on the vector to give us the peak delay then we need to call the mean function to obtain their averages and this is exactly what is shown here on the lower side that is we compute the max of end to end delay first and then we determine the mean it is interesting to see here that the max function is getting applied on single coated end to end delay this is what we have to do in analysis editor if we are using a certain scalar data name which has spaces inside